Hi and welcome to episode two of the Tuesday Tips podcast, helping you take the next step to overcoming stress, depression and anxiety for good. Today we'll be exploring why a mental health daily ritual guarantees success and most importantly what you need to do as the first step in your ritual. You're listening to How to Change Your Life One Step at a Time with me, Katie Woodland. Tune in every week so that you can use tried and tested tips, tricks and hacks to start living the life you want right now. When we're struggling with stress, depression and anxiety, one of the key things to remember is that your brain is not functioning at full capacity. The areas of the brain which are most affected are the ones which are responsible for what's known as higher order functioning. Now this includes thinking, processing information and memory. Now the only way to overcome stress, depression or anxiety is by changing the way we both think and act. If your brain, however, is meddling with you trying to do this, which it is going to be doing, it's very easy to end up stuck in the status quo day after day with nothing improving. However, we can create good habits which have a positive effect on our mental health if maintained for a long enough period. And I'm not talking about months and months, I mean consistently doing the same thing for a minimum of four weeks and a maximum of six weeks before it becomes a habit and something that can then drastically improve our mental health in just a couple of weeks. But if we stop right at the beginning, we end up back where we started. Now, when we're thinking about overcoming stress, depression, anxiety, I want you to just forget we're talking about a life-limiting mental health issue for the moment and instead focus on remembering we're just talking about taking one step forward. Now, I'm sure you, like many of us, get so excited by January the 1st rolling around because this is the year we're going to cut out cake, stop drinking, go to the gym three times a week, every week, blah, 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 and all the other New Year's resolution rubbish. And let's be honest, it really is rubbish because the vast majority of us give up after just a couple of weeks. In fact, I know that most people don't even make it until the end of January. One of the main reasons is you're simply trying to do too much at once. Plus, at the three-week mark, your brain is fighting back. It starts to say things like, you've done so well, you can have just one day off, or this isn't a quick fix, this is a long-term thing, don't burn yourself out too early, or even, if you have that cake today, then you can always do an extra 15 minutes at the gym tomorrow. Then what happens, we just give in. Our brain wins and we spend the whole of the year doing fits and starts, which is so unbelievably demoralising, we then believe we just can't change. We start believing things like, maybe we're genetically programmed to just love cake, or I'm addicted to junk food and can't do anything about it. And then this is when we really give up until it's October and we're starting to feel really rubbish about ourselves again. So much so, January the 1st rolls around and hey presto, we're making the same resolutions we have for the past 10 years. I promise you, if you commit fully to doing something consistently in an almost ritualized way for six weeks, you have then just built yourself your first healthy habit. Now it is weeks three and four where we have to muster every ounce of willpower to push through that barrier. But once we get over that hill, life is unbelievably glorious. Now, the hardest thing about going to the gym is getting off your bum and going to the gym. But what on earth has this got to do with mental health? Well, when we're stressed, depressed or anxious, there's a lot of uncertainty in our lives. And the more uncertainty we have, the stronger the need to hide away from the world. 
by building a really simple, easily achievable morning ritual, we take away some of that ambiguity and release a little bit of pressure from ourselves. Now, I am well aware that for many people who are struggling with depression, stress or anxiety, getting out of bed is one of the hardest things you need to do every day. So this morning routine is particularly important if this specific issue is one of your symptoms. The longer you consistently follow a ritual in a morning, the easier it is going to be for you to get up and out of bed and then this will start you on your mentally healthy journey. When you commit, you become in control of what happens as you leave the safety of your bed and this alone is massive. Now, I'm not saying from tomorrow you set your alarm at stupid o'clock and say, hey, I'm going to get this 10-step routine in place, boom, boom, boom. That is not going to happen. We are talking about changing your life one step at a time because this is the only way to make sure your life actually changes. Therefore, you need to do just one thing for the next seven days. When you wake up, get out of bed. Open the blinds or curtains, make your bed and head off into the bathroom as you normally would. Commit that you will not go back to bed. Even if you spend all day on the sofa drifting in and out of sleep, you will not go back to bed until it's bedtime. Set yourself a bedtime and stick to it. This little shift is not scary enough to trigger your stress, depression or anxiety to clamp down, but it is enough to start helping you feel safe enough to get out of bed the next morning. If, however, you can already get up in the morning, then what you need to do is make sure that the first few seconds after your alarm goes off is spent thinking about one thing that's happy. Now, I don't mean pretending to be happy or all of this positive talk that's going on. I mean recalling a positive experience that has actually happened in your life. Whether it was the new pair of shoes you wore on your birthday, the giant fish you caught when you were three, or the day you got your new puppy before you realised how much of a huge mistake it was. Um, Now, if you are struggling to do this, grab your phone or photo album, if you still have a photo album that is, and find two or three pictures of these happy moments. Place these right next to your alarm so that as you turn your alarm off, you grab your happy picture. Spend one to two minutes lying in bed, looking at your picture. Can you remember anything about the day? What was said? What did it smell like? Who was there but not in the picture? Now, the key to this actually working and this little trick helping you is getting your feelings aligned. Recalling how you felt that day and bringing it into the present moment. All those things should help you leave yesterday where it belongs and start today that were not happier. Now, the more you do this, the quicker you're going to be able to pull yourself out of the morning funk and into a more positive feeling place. And this is your first step. Now, if you are struggling to get out of bed, don't put the pressure on yourself by sticking a photo by your alarm. Instead, stick it up by your bathroom mirror so that you can look at it when you're brushing your teeth. If you want to take that one extra step. So your homework for this week is to one, find two to three happy memory pictures and have them printed out. So if you've only got them on Facebook, please make sure you print them out. This is super important. Make sure you look for the happy pictures when you're feeling okay. Now, once you've found your pictures, try to get into that feeling space so it's easier for you to recall it in the morning. You've got to do it there and then so that you know what you're kind of hunting for in the morning. So step two, set a bedtime and stick to it. And step three, get up when you wake up and commit to getting out of bed and under no uncertain terms going back into bed until it's bedtime. Okay, so you can grab your Easy Breezy checklist using the link below. Please know if you are signing up late to the party, you'll get week one first and then this week's 
will appear in your inbox in seven days time. I know that this might be really frustrating for you, but trust me, this is absolutely necessary because this is how together we can create lasting change in your life. So every week we are making small little shifts, not giant leaps, but it's these small consistent shifts which have you looking back in a couple of months time and realising that your whole world has changed for the better. Also, as I'm not there with you, it's really important you take this one step at a time. Doing too much too quickly without the right support can genuinely possibly have very negative consequences. So if you don't think you can do it alone or you'd like a little extra support, please use the calendar link below to book in for your free mini therapy session. So good luck and don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so that you never miss an episode. Catch you next week.